Okay, so we're going to look at now some DC transfer characteristics of um, the differential op amp, not differential op amp, differential amplifier. And I'm not going to redraw the circuit here, but you want to, well, I'll at least scroll back up here. You want to be able to reference this figure. Um, you know, I know that, for instance, it's IC1 and IC2, so on and so on. So we're going to go back to um, some very basics here of computing um, the currents and remembering that we have that IC1 is equal to my reverse saturation current times E to the base emitter voltage um, 1 divided by my thermal voltage which actually we write as VT. And then we'd also have the IC2. And because these transistors are matched, it's IS again. But then this would be VBE2 divided by VT. Um, and remembering then that we have IQ is equal to IC1 plus IC2 and then of course this is neglecting base currents. Now um, it's important to, to remember here is that we are not in common mode necessarily or differential mode. We don't know what the mode is here. So we're just looking with these equations. VBE1 I can't assume is VBE2. So we can't make any of those kinds of assumptions. But what I can do is I can write here that IQ is equal to then IS times E VBE1 divided by VT plus E VBE2 divided by VT. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, something here that at first doesn't look like it's going to be very helpful to us, but we're going to try and get these. We're going to try and get IC1. What This is what we want. We want IC1 and IC2 in terms of this differential mode voltage. I want to be able to compute what those are, get some nice equations for those. So what do we have here? So what I'm going to look at now is I'm going to look at IC1 over IQ. Now, this is going to look weird at first. We'd have IS E to the VBE1 divided by VT. And then this would be divided by IS E VBE1. To the e two. Now, what we're going to do here to actually simplify this a little bit, it doesn't look like it'd be simplifying it, but what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply this by 1 over IS E to the VBE1 divided by VT divided by 1 divided by IS E to the VBE and these should be 1's here divided by VT. And so what that's going to do for us here is we're going to get this entire numerator cancelled with that. 
the ISs of course are going to cancel but then this here with this is going to get me a 1 so what I end up with is IC1 over IQ is 1 divided by 1 plus and then wait I'm going to be doing I'm going to be doing this here divided by this and remember when you divide th things what do you do to the exponents you subtract them so what I'm going to wind up with here is 1 plus e to the VBE2 minus VBE1 divided by VT. But I'm going to do one more adjustment here. And I'm going to write this as 1 over one plus e, I'm going to factor out a negative and write this as VBE1 minus VBE2 divided by VT. Now let's think about this for a second. Why would I factor out a negative? Well, what was our goal here? We want IC1 in terms of VD. Well, what is VD? VD is VBE1 minus VBE2. So what do I have right here? This term inside here is simply VD. So I have IC1 over IQ is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative VD divided by VT. Now this Q here, this IQ, this is just my biasing current. So that's just my biasing current. This is would be that IC1 is going to be equal to IQ over 1 plus e to the minus VD over VT. Now, doing almost the exact same kinds of arguments here, what we get for IC2 then, it's almost the exact same. I encourage you to go through the computation yourself to verify it but you would get E to a positive VD divided by VT. And that's, of course, why is it going to be positive? Because at this step here, back here at this step, it's going to be VBE2 as opposed to the VBE1. So we'd have VBE1 minus VBE2 already set up in the denominator. So that's why it would be a positive. But now, what do we have here? We have our goal. We have IC1 and IC2 in terms of VD. Now, the other thing we're interested in is transconductance. Now, recall for a single BJT, we just had GM was equal to IC divided by VT. But now what do we have here? Well, we've got to look at a derivative of one of these things here. And if I look at a derivative of one of these things here, um, 
I'm going to define this as GF, which is what we're going to call the forward transconductance. And we're going to define it differently because um, the equation is going to be different, so that's why we're kind of giving it a different name here. I mean, they're both forward transconductances um, in reality, but we're just giving it a different symbol so that we don't confuse it with the classic GM that we've been using. And so then GF, by definition for transconductance, is just my derivative, and we'll do IC1 with respect to VD, and we'll evaluate this at VD equals zero. Okay. Well, now what we need to do is do a derivative of this thing. So let's rewrite this one more time. I, I'm going to rewrite this as IQ times 1 plus e to the negative VD over VT to the negative 1 power. OK, so now we have to take a derivative of that bad boy. And it's just using chain rule. So we'd have um, negative 1 times IQ times 1 plus e to the minus VD over VT to the negative 2 times e to the negative VD over VT times negative 1 over VT. And that's just applying a bunch of chain rules. Um, I'm not going to go through the details any more than that. That's just calculus. And then we're going to evaluate this at zero. But if I evaluate this at zero, that just becomes one. Um, this becomes one. We have a negative here and a negative here. And so we get that GF is equal to IQ. 2 to the negative 2 power times 1 over Vt, which would just simply be Iq over 4 Vt, which is very different than what we had before here. for the individual, because now this is the forward transconductance again for kind of the whole differential op amp here. Now if we wanted to, um, we could go ahead and rewrite this, if we think about this here, if we think of um, Sorry. You could write that GF is equal to IQ over 4VT, which is 1 half IQ over 2 over VT, which would be one half I C, kind of assuming that we're in that common mode range. And we are because we're applying V D equals zero. So they're both getting zero evaluated when we're computing the transconductance. And then what do we have here? Well, this is just one half G M. So G F is one half G M. Um, so this is the individual transistor transconductance. This is kind of the um, amplifier transconductance.